We live in time is just devastating. My heart hurts, my head hurts, my face hurts. Most of that's due to the cold I've been battling for the last two days. The movie sure didn't help none. So I just saw We Live in Time. Let's talk about it. Again, I've been battling the cold for the last two days, so if I sound funky, that's why. Directed by John Crowley, stars Andrew Garfield and Florence Pugh. It's about a couple named Tobias and Almet. They live in the UK. He works for Weetabix, and she is a chef. This is a romantic drama, which is wonderful because we don't get too many romantic dramas anymore. We have been deprived of the romantic genre in general, whether it's a rom-com or a drama. It's so nice to see romance back on the big screen. Quality romance, that was just straight quality to the best young actors of this here generation. I mean, how old is Andrew Garfield? I don't even know. But just... What an interesting pairing because you have Florence Pugh, who's fabulous, right? But she has a very um, strong quality to her performance, the way she emotes and acts. There's something very sturdy and strong about her. And then Andrew Garfield, who has always been just so emotionally vulnerable as an actor. So you take these two people who, you know, emote emotion very differently and you combine that and it makes for such a wonderful piece. I don't want to give too much of the story away, but this is basically about their love story, how they met and how it all ends. And you know the end from the beginning because this is a completely non-linear narrative. This whole thing is about time and just the, the cruelty of time, the beauty of time and just how t short time is and how we're so desperate as human beings in this finite world to make such an impact in such a short amount of time. And because time is such the focus, it feels like instead of, you know, writing a narrative we're floating through memories this was just really well done it was so simple just straightforward honest beautiful but this is very you know performance driven character driven we're, we're hanging on the edge of their performances in order for this to work they have to make it work and they make it work um florence Pugh and uh andrew garfield together i need them to do more together that used to be a thing once upon a time, particularly in the 90s, where we'd see, you know, uh, two actors do movies together quite often. You know, Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks, first one that comes to mind. I wouldn't mind seeing Andrew Garfield and um, Florence Pugh in another romantic drama together a second. I wouldn't mind seeing them again. I see a lot of movies, but I don't always look forward to every movie I see. Like, I'm not just itching and waiting to see everything that I just happen to get a ticket for. But this, I've been waiting to see this for months. And, oh. Uh. And in this theme of time, you have a love story and how sometimes love just happens at the right time and then you have to think about okay do I look to the future do I plan for the future or I just do I just live in the now and then you think about where you are in time they're in their mid-30s and being a woman in your mid-30s you start to think about time differently because we're on a biological clock so to speak actually no that's very accurate we are on a biological clock we don't have a whole lot of time to do the thing that we are biologically designed to do which is to bear children so there that comes into play in our story of him wanting to be a father one day and her thinking about what that means for her in terms of having children and how that works in her life does she see herself being a mother but then they're faced with a situation where she really has to think about okay it may not be what I want right now but in time I might want this and the devastating irony of choosing more time and how that backfires on them. It's just heartbreaking. Looking at this non-linear narrative and the way it's structured, because again, it's like we're almost floating through memories. It makes me wonder if this is being told from his perspective, if we're looking at his look back on his life and how he used his time. Because how they met, spoiler alert, she ran him over with his car, but he ended up going to a little grocery store because he needed to get pens. But he didn't take the time to put on proper clothes. He didn't take the time to put on underwear. He instead just put on shoes, went out in the robe that he was wearing, thinking, oh, just a quick trip to the store and then quick walk back. And what if he had taken the time? What if he had taken the time to put on proper clothes? They never would have met, but it, it's all about timing it's those little things those minute choices and they matter but it's even those big choices it's all about choices that we make the small ones and the big ones and how they all matter and how they can always lengthen or shorten 
time but at the end of the day you have to make the most of what you got because you don't know i just want to sit somewhere and cry just cry stare at a wall and just cry and eat ice cream that was so heartbreaking i'm a little hurt but i'm pretty sure that's the day quilt kicking in has some clunky cutesy little moments here and there that kind of break from that dramatic of it all but you know for the most part I'd say a solid eight and a half out of ten